And on top of everything else, cavalry school is simply one great horseback adventure, starting with crossing the Little Bighorn, which we did several times every day. It's not the Missouri, but it's no little creek either. We were instructed to stay focused on the other side of the river because looking down at the rushing water can make your head spin. Go, you two, get up there! And it was always a bit of a thrill to ford that river and to remember those who had been here before, not all that long ago. Our final Sunday in camp, 16 of us crossed the river again to ride to Last Stand Hill on the Little Bighorn National Monument. There we'd participate in ceremonies remembering those who fell here on both sides. Most of the 210 troopers who died with Custer are buried in a common grave at the base of the monument that bears their names. Many of the officers were buried elsewhere. Custer lies at West Point. Inside the nearby visitor center, you can see his dress uniform and the buckskins he wore on campaign. There's also a memorial to honor the Indians who died fighting for their freedom and their very way of life. But in the end, it was a losing cause. While the Sioux and Cheyenne won the day, the Little Bighorn would turn out to be their last stand as well. And within a year after the battle, most had surrendered, their free roaming days of the buffalo hunts gone forever. <laughs> But not forgotten. That dramatic history is recreated every year during the reenactment of the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Custer, yellow hair. Hosted by the Real Bird family, calf school troopers and bareback riding Crow Indians stage what is really a great outdoor play about the coming of the white man oh, and the clashes that followed. Hundreds of people from all over the country watch this history lesson written by the Real Birds and told from the Indian point of view. We calf school troopers displayed the formation riding and other skills we'd worked on during the week and put those gun safety lessons to work as well. As we reenact several battle scenes, culminating with the one that everyone has come to see. It's the history of the imperfect people of America, this land we all love, no matter what tribe we come from. And U.S. Cavalry School is part of that story. Oh, I thought they did a really great job. It was super educational. It was awesome, the history. I love when they brought out the horses. I think about what the reenactment is all about, and really it's about telling a story. And it's such a powerful story. And you're contributing to the education and the understanding of, of thousands of folks who know nothing about this. So there's a legacy in essence, and you're passing that legacy on. So when you're out there telling that story, remind yourself of that, because everybody's watching and everybody's learning. That's it for now. We're back next time with more cool stuff from today's Wild West. I'm Mark Bedore. We'll see you down the trail. For more information on the people and places featured in today's Wild West, or to order show DVDs and books, visit todayswildwest.com. Funding for Today's Wild West provided by the Montana Film Commission, the Leggett Foundation, the Chuck Wagon Trail Riders Foundation, the Dude Ranchers Association, and the Dude Ranch Foundation.